Yo, what's up? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Wednesday, January 29th, 2020. I'm one of your hosts, Blessing, Addy Oye Jr., and joining me is Tim motherfucking Gettys. Let Tim host. How are you doing, Bless? Dude, I'm doing pretty good, man. Yeah? I, I feel like I feel like my morning routine is finally starting to get cemented because okay. I now have my tea. Yes. Yes. My Kevin got tea. you a little kettle. Yeah, he got so me a been kettle. Back there. He got me like a whole box of different kinds of teas. Ooh, and so I'm, today I'm drinking got some, my... You got some herbals in there? You yeah, got some dude. Earl Grey? Got, got the passion uh, tea. You got the Earl Grey. So today I'm drinking um, English breakfast tea. This should be a new segment of the show. What tea is Bless drinking? Dude, I'm, I'm totally down for that. What's the tea? What's the tea? Oh, that's great, actually. We're going to start starting off with There we that. go. And so, there yeah, we go. Today is all about, I put about uh, three or four cubes cubes of sugar. Oh, three here. or four sugar three cubes. Three or four sugar cubes. Yeah, Woo! Like got to start like the day off right. You want to get yeah, going. Man, I like it sweet. Okay. I like it dark. Yeah. I like it good. Dark and sweet. Yeah, man. I'm all about that. How's your morning Let's been? Go. It's going really well. I'm you know, having a little PTSD dealing with the whole DC stuff going on. Uh, and by that, I mean we're forcing ourselves to watch the movies and then talk oh, about them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You guys did like the four hour. When I stop and yesterday. think about the fact that in the last really seven days, maybe eight days, in the last eight days, mm-hmm. I've had to watch Man of Steel, the Batman v Superman extended cut, Jesus. and talk about each of those for longer than the duration of the movies. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm starting to fall apart little by little, but Greg Miller, I feel stronger than ever. So. I mean, hey, the movies only get better from here, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I actually I actually do – I did like Suicide Squad more than Batman well, v Superman. We got Suicide Squad review coming up on Monday, yeah. so let's see how this Stay goes. Stay tuned for that. Today's stories include not Suicide Squad, but we are talking <laughs> movie, Netflix. So we're talking about things sort of in that realm because Corey Barlog has some big dreams. Uh, we're also talking about diversity in the games industry and more because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily each and every weekday at 10 a.m. live right here on twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. If you're watching live, you can correct us when we get stuff wrong by going to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. If you don't want to watch live, you can watch later on youtube.com slash Kind of Funny Games or listen later on podcast services around the globe by searching for Kind of Funny Games Daily. To be a part of the show, head to patreon.com slash games where bronze members or above get to write in and silver members or above get the show ad free. Now it's time for some housekeeping. We have our second 12-hour stream going the down final this 12 hour stream. Friday. Tim, what can people expect from that stream? Oh, my God. Shenanigans galore, bless. Shenanigans? Now, here's the deal. This is uh, the final push for our January fundraising for mm. the, the new Kind of Funny studio, for Kind of Funny Games 4.0, for everything that we're doing. Every single new dollar made in January goes towards all these cool stuff, the thermometer. We're going to... Um, during the stream, early on in the stream, debut the new set of thermometer goals, the new stuff that we're adding oh, okay. to, to kind of push. We have some fun stuff. Oh, wow. Some fun is, stuff. Is there going any chance there. we get like a taste of anything on there? Um, I'll, give you, that, I'll give you a little taste. A little taste? A little taste oh. for something that, that's up your alley. Oh. Maybe maybe a little uh, stream involving you and a little Barrett Courtney and a little, a little, a certain monkey oh that we might know. i love me some barrett courtney and some monkeys so there we go both so we'll have to things. see we'll have to see how that goes but no, what that can it's be. gonna be cool it's gonna be a long day uh, i do know we're gonna end it with the kind of funny podcast awesome um and at that point we will probably be sufficiently inebriated yeah so it's gonna be a fun one it's gonna be a good one it's gonna be a great one thank you to our patreon producers blackjack and muhammad muhammad today we're brought to you by gi joe warren cobra and robin hood but i'll tell you about that later for now let's begin with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. Now, here's the thing. I've been seeing some comments about how I say time for some news, right? And here's the thing. I can't bring the same level of energy that Greg Miller brings. I want to see how long he can keep doing this. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just going to bring my own flair to it. I can't be Greg Miller, and so I'm just going to say it's time for some news. Oh, wait. We have six stories today. A baker's <laughs> dozen! I totally bossed. I don't know if I said it's time for some news in the right place, but, hey, here we are. I'll go as long as you need me to go. Love you, Kevin. <laughs> Number one, Corey Barlog thinks God of War could lend itself to a Netflix series. This comes from Alessio Palumbo of WCCF Tech. Corey Barlog, the man behind God of War 2 and 2018's God of War reboot, thinks the God-killing saga could lend itself well for a Netflix-style TV series adaptation after other popular game IPs like Castlevania and The Witcher did so well recently. Now, this is a screenshot from Corey Barlock's Twitter, and this is like almost the Avengers of a news report right here because you have a tweet from GamesIndustry.biz. They tweeted out, uh, which other game games IP lend themselves to a Netflix-style series? And they talk about how they discuss that on their GamesIndustry.biz uh, podcast, right? Corey Barlock then takes that and quote tweets that and says, God of War, like all on three separate lines, right? He's really emphasizing it. He, he thinks God of War will lend itself great to a Netflix-style series. At least he thinks so, right? That he, he writes that in the tweet. 
Barlog was quick. What's the hashtag there? Uh, oh, no, it's not a hashtag. oh yeah, there's it's no hashtag. Emojis. It's just a link. What yeah. emojis we got? It's like the 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 fist emoji, like I don't Let's know. Let's fucking go. Power, yeah, power and the heart emoji, love, mm. power and love. Mm. Barlog was quick to clarify. There's nothing in the works as of yet. It is currently it is currently just his wish. Quote. By the way, this is not a hint or anything. I just believe that games would make great TV shows because you spend so much time with the characters in fantastic worlds. Games like TV are relationships with the characters, uh, where movies are more like a date. Both can be great. End quote. That's true. That's true. It's true. See, I love this. I love this type of shoot your shot shit where Corey put this out into the world and chances are it's not going to happen. But mm -hmm. there's more of a chance of it happening now than there was two days ago. You put this out there. People are interested. People are like, hmm, that is a good idea. Somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody is like, hey, I got a friend at Netflix. I should connect you with my other friend, Corey Barlog. Yeah. Right. And then next thing you know, God of War potentially being a thing. What's your TV show? I can't believe it actually happened. And more than that, I can't believe people actually liked it. Yeah. Did you like it? Because I know I didn't watch it. people had mixed feelings on it from what I could tell. Like a lot of people really liked it. But then there are quite a few people that are like, this seems boring. Like, it's not my thing. I watched the first episode and I was like. I could see myself getting into it, but I didn't really feel uh, feel compelled to keep watching it, which well, might we, say something. We have the the host of Kind of Funny's number one uh, entertainment podcast here with us. Oh, Kevin, wow. what did you think of The Witcher? I was utterly shocked at how much I enjoyed it. Was it like the best like show that I've seen this year? Not by a mile. Watchmen mm -hmm. was probably the best show I've watched this year, this year, but like it did such a good job of being Monster of the Week and keeping me into the story. Good job. And if, like, they could do that with God of War, <laughs> I'm all yeah. in. Now, the thing with God of War, especially after the reboot, is I don't know if they can do that. I feel like God of War needs a sense of scale and, like, a grand narrative that uh, I feel might be better served animated. I can see that. You know, you just, yeah. and, and especially... In terms of, like, the action sequences, for sure. Yeah, and I feel like going back to the older school God of War games could be a bit more actually interesting. Uh, for this, of just like not necessarily monster of the week, but just seeing Kratos fuck shit up and just like mm -hmm. have it be that like hot topic, edgy style, but with animation, I think that could be really cool because Castlevania has kind of met somewhere in the middle. Like, I never finished the second season of Castlevania, um, but that's because I got distracted. I loved it though, mm -hmm. both season one and season two was even better. Um, I, I thought that they did a great job like actually crafting a group of characters that I care about and making them do interesting things and having fight scenes that are very gruesome, but not in a way where it's like, oh, this is just doing this to, for attention, but mm. like, oh, this fits the characters and I understand where they're going. I mean, they're fighting fucking demon shit. Yeah. What's up, Kev? I just really quickly wanted to say, like, I really think that God of War as like the big video games lend themselves where like to be made into a show where there is character growth, you know what I mean? Maybe the first three games are all squashed into one season where it's like this dude's journey. And even that could probably be, at the very least, two seasons, i say. And then the third is as it transitions into the, the new God of War, the games that we know, and where the characters changed a lot. Let, mm -hmm. me, do, let me do you one, one better, okay? It's one season. Not directly adapting the God of War 2018 story, but like... And I, I a, a medium accurate representation of it. So okay. like make it make it so it's more TV show based, not video game yeah. based. But have that story. But throughout it, have the flashbacks of God of War one Interesting. through three. So it's like the the stories are kind of interweaving. So maybe in one season that's way too much to do all of that. But maybe kind of like the first arc of the God of War reboot. That's what the season one is. But you are going back and, and getting kind of like the the backstory of mm -hmm. all the other Kratos. See, shit. the I have kind of a mixture between what you're saying and what Kevin's Kevin are saying. Uh, like a, a vision for this, right? Where I, I think what you're saying as far as action and big set pieces lending themselves better to maybe more of an animated kind of thing, I think makes sense. And so the way I would do it is I think God of War 1, 2, and 3 and Ascension, if you want to have that in there too, you know, maybe do that as like a prequel cartoon series and do God of War 2018 as more of a, a live action Netflix thing. Because I think God of War 2018's story kind of lends itself to character growth and like the the slower moments and the more intimate moments in the way that god of war god of wars one through three are more so like hey we're climbing this big god and we're gonna kill it and that's that's kind of like the the thrust of those stories which i don't necessarily want like a grounded like you know intimate look at god of war one through three even though that those games have their their intimate moments right like kratos having to like 
or uh, Kratos, I, I guess, blindly murdering his family and having his, their ashes, you know, be part of him. That's tragic, and that's like that's a terrible thing, right? That could make for some uh, heartbreaking TV. But at the same time, I think God of War twenty eighteen, in terms of tone and um, even like the cinematic presentation of it, I could see that lending itself well to an, a Netflix series. Barrett Courtney, what you got for me? Y'all aren't getting creative enough, uh, Kevin. Really quick, oh. the wall is off. Um, Y'all aren't getting creative enough. This series should be the. I don't know if this was said already. The gap between three and f- uh, the new one. Mm-hmm. We should see his journey of ta- like going throughout these different lands of different uh, religious beliefs and see him fall in love with the woman that we don't really get to meet in the the new God of War. I think that there's a fascinating story that that'd, could be, be, that'd told be pretty cool. Him like there and like it's not too attached to anything else. To like, they can tell a new and different story with that. Mm. Mm. I can see there that, right? Like, I can't see that being good, though. That's the problem. Really? Yeah. It could be like a Star Wars prequels kind of thing. You got right? a small imagination, the then, Tim. But I imagine it's one of those things where you're answering questions. You're answering questions that maybe we didn't want the answer to. Yeah, that, that's the kind right? of thing like maybe there. like the answers they provide aren't necessarily up to snuff with kind of what where how we filled in the gaps ourselves from God of War three to God of War twenty eighteen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I but feel like, like, of course, they could come up with something compelling, but I feel like that's not the stuff that makes yeah. God of War compelling, right? Well, I feel like that's, I feel like those are the answers that I want. If, like, if they do give me those answers, I want them from the game, not necessarily from some other sort of, like... Medium. Yeah, medium. Yeah. Like, I feel like that would be a weird thing, because those those bits feel so central to the the story of God of War and the plot of what's going on, mm. that, like, I feel like telling them in a movie or in a TV show as opposed to in the game might be a disservice to... The game. Yeah. This is also the thing. I'm just going to get ahead of it. I don't want this. You don't want a uh, Netflix uh, style God Not of War for God series? of War. I, I feel like God of War is a perfect example of a game that is so narrative based and so cinematic that l- let it be its own thing as a video game. Mm-hmm. Like that, it already kind of has, it's already close enough to being a movie that it's like, well, Let's let's you know let's give something let's have it let it have its uniqueness as a video game as something that's interactive. Mm-hmm. Take something that's a bit more like fluff and turn that into a show. Like Gary Wood talking about Star Fox, an animated show. Yeah, I'm oh, into yeah. that. I want like that makes sense to me because there's no consequence there. Yeah, I feel like I for God of War, I kind of want it. I want it more than I'd want Last of Us or an Uncharted movie. Like I don't really want an Uncharted movie because I feel like there's nothing you can really do for Uncharted as. A, a show and franchise that really is going to uplift the story more. Like mm-hmm. it's pretty Uncharted is pretty straightforward in terms of what it is, and it's basically just Indiana Jones. So if you make an Uncharted movie, it's probably just going to be Indiana Jones, right? Whereas God of War, I feel like they do a good job, especially in God of War twenty eighteen, in portraying this as more of a of a huge world or huge worlds, right? Because now we're in multiple mm-hmm. mythologies, and they can explore like these smaller intimate stories, right? God of War twenty eighteen is about uh, Atreus. Kratos and the mother and you know this journey to the top of the mountain to fulfill this thing they're trying to fulfill right and that's like that that doesn't feel huge in any way but because it's this smaller more focused thing it feels like a nice complete story with this huge world surrounding it and so I feel like they could if if they wanted to they could just tell another one of Kratos' stories within this world or within the world of Greek mythology like I feel like there's there, there are certain directions they can take it that would make it not feel like there are adding things just to add things or mm-hmm. they're just telling a story just just to tell a story like i feel like you can tell a purposeful story in that world that doesn't conflict with the main story of god of war yeah which i think could, could be cool yeah i just think it would be difficult because the things that make god of war special are all of that in addition to the characters that show up i, don't, I still don't want to spoil it yeah, yeah it's game. hard to like yeah but like characters show up that are big deals throughout the the storyline and like characters that Kratos faces that, that keep coming back or that are just one off enemies and things. I feel like that's stuff that's that's more difficult to show than it is to play, right? And For I feel sure. like that's the beauty of video games and that's what video games allow things like Last of Us, God of War and Uncharted to do even though they are so similar to uh, movies and TV series in so many ways narratively mm-hmm. I think that you get that extra level up because it's interactive and that's why I think that with a lot of these shows it it's hard to boil down like what the essence of the like story is and like why why does that need to be TV why why should it be TV you mm-hmm. know I feel like we see see the same issue a lot with comic books being turned into movies where you can't just do one for one. A lot of it needs to be one for one, or should be one for one. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you need to then add twists to make it better 
because it's a movie, because it's a TV show, or else you're just why not just read the book? Yeah, you know that makes sense. Do you think we see this? No, no, I, I'm with you. I don't think we. I don't think we actually see this because like it's not Corey Barlog's decision. You know, at the end of the day, but it's up to PlayStation because since they own the IP, PlayStation Studios though. Like they, yeah. <laughs> they want to start leading into doing that stuff. So but they wouldn't give it to Netflix though. This is serious, right? Because their whole thing is they actually make mo- movies, right? Yeah, but but who cares? You know, mm-hmm. Paramount makes movies. You know, like all these like different distributors, like they make movies, but they could end up on on Netflix. Netflix at this point is just a distribution distribution yeah. platform. I would like to s- hmm. see. PlayStation Studios, I don't. I mean, I'm not had. I'm not built up the trust with them yet, and so like, if, if well, they don't exist yet. They don't exist yet. They, right? I mean, it's, it's like they currently exist. They're doing stuff behind the scenes. Anything that they've done previously, it, I don't count it as yeah. a representation of what their their goals are. I'm not saying that I have any faith in this. You yeah, know? like if 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 there was an announcement today that PlayStation Studios has greenlit a God of War series that is going to be um, that they're going to put on Netflix, I don't know. If I'd be excited or not, just because like it's one of those things where, you know, PlayStation Studio still doesn't sound like a real thing to me. Right. And like I know like it's confirmed like they're working on it. They have big names on it. But at the same time, PlayStation Studios, just like the name of it. I'm like, man, it, there, there is such a reputation for a video game, uh, video game products or video game movies, video game adaptations. Yeah. That, you know, it's. It's it's hard to really get behind. And Witcher, of course, is like has come come through and it's been successful. But I mean, dude, again, I was I, not to repeat myself, but it's mm-hmm. like Witcher is an anomaly. Like I yeah. can't believe it. I, we got a Witcher TV show that again was good with Henry Cavill. It's like there's so many elements of that that I feel like four years ago, and I, I'm not saying that, like I can't believe it's good because of him. I can't believe he's part of it. Like yeah, that, like that is like, Superman is the star of this video game TV show. Like, that's... And, and that's, the, like, I think he's really good in it. Like, that's at, crazy. At first, it was like, oh, I don't really care about this character, but by the end, I was like, he's got rules that I like. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Going back to one of the first videos, kind of funny, ever made after we left IGN, it was, there was rumors of a Zelda animated series coming to Netflix. Yeah. And we did, like, a reaction video of us talking about that and what that could look like. Henry Cavill and, for Link. And, yeah, let's fucking go. Could you uh, imagine? But it's just like, of course, that didn't happen. Right, and it's like I feel like these type of news story or these type of things, like they they come and they go, and it's just that's why it's such a surprise to me that Witcher actually happened, you yeah. know. But we're also in a different world now with with Netflix and with how things are made and how partnerships happen and licensing and stuff. So, last question: Who do you who would you want to play Kratos if they greenlit it? <sighs> Shit, I don't know, man. Pitbull. Oh my god, <laughs> Dale. <laughs> <laughs> Idris Elba. Oh, Jesus. Like I don't. I don't know if he's the perfect pick, but no, no, he's he could work. Good though. Yeah, Idris Elba is a great actor, and I feel like he could play that gruff, like emotionless or like shut down, tough character. I think I feel like he could pull that off. Yo, that's cool. I like that. Right. Number two, Ori and the Will of the Wisps has gone gold. This is Yay. from Ori's Twitter. Ori and the Will of the Wisps has gone gold. A big congratulations to Moon Studio and the entire team. Unravel Ori's Destiny on March 11th by pre-ordering the gorgeous collector's edition from your favorite retailers. Hashtag Ori the game. So I feel like this is good news because we've gotten a lot of delays recently. And so a lot of delay. I mean, including Ori. Did it get delayed? Ori was one of the first ones to get delayed. Really? Yeah, at the Game Awards, I want to say. Was it or, from no, 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 February? It was inside Xbox. When they did that November thing. It was supposed to come out originally in February, yeah. right? Okay, that's yeah. what I thought. So when I read March, I was back, like, interesting. Push back a month um, unceremoniously. But, mm-hmm. hey, man, whatever, dude. Like, it, it sucks. Delays always suck to hear about, and it sucks to deal with and whatever. But, like, this is – it's – the game's go, – it's gold now. Yeah. It's coming. Yeah. Every sign points to this being a fantastic experience. Yeah. So, so I'm really excited, excited about it. for it. Did you play the first one? No. It's good, no, man. Did, I you didn't try, give it a shot at all. I, I, well, I started it, but it's one of those things where I bought an Xbox One in like 2016, I want to say, mm-hmm. and Ori was one of the games that came with it. And I also got Rare Replay and a couple other games. Say no more. And fan. yeah, I was like, oh, Rare Replay, and I just got. And that was all, the only thing I played for probably the first few months that I had an Xbox. Just yeah. going through Banjo Kazooie and Jet Force Gemini and all my yeah. games. Totally get it. But yeah. I, the thing with Ori, are you a Metroidvania guy at all? Uh, I mean, I'm. I can be. I think it's it's game by game for me. Yeah. Like I'm not if somebody, if you told me that a game is Metroidvania, I'm not all like, "Oh, let's go." But, you know, I I do enjoy some Metroidvanias. Yeah. I'm excited for this one cuz I feel like it, it the first one at least added a lot of very unique things to the genre and uh, least of which being a beautiful beautiful art style that we haven't really seen before. Mm. Like I feel like Metroidvania has kind of got stuck in a rut in the last 
five, six years of all of them kind of looking just like the old same. school uh, pixel based uh, yeah. things. And then we started seeing the, in the last couple of years a bit of a different branch out, like with things like Hollow Knight mm-hmm. and and I think Ori going in a different direction uh, and really kind of like using the power of the Xbox in a unique way. Um, so I'm very excited yeah. to play through this guy. I like I I think my friend Rihanna is a huge Ori fan, and so shout out to that. Shout out to her. Number three, the industry is becoming more diverse, and more developers support inclusion efforts. This is by Rebecca Valentine of GamesIndustry.biz, and it's a huge article. I try to cut down as much as I can, uh, but I highly recommend people go to go to GamesIndustry.biz, check out the full article because there is a lot of information there, and even the information that I, I cut down is still a lot. And so I'm gonna uh, read through it, and we can talk about it. In an IGDA developer survey, 85% of developers said that diversity in the games industry was important. The IGDA has re- has released re- uh, the results of the 2019 Developer Satisfaction Survey, which showed growing industry support for diversity initiatives from the last survey in 2017. 1,116 people were surveyed, most of whom were primarily game developers, though others were included who make games as a small portion of their work or who work in roles supportive of a of game creation. Of those surveyed, the demographic breakdown showed a majority of North American participants, 60%, alongside gr- smaller groups of, res- of respondents in Europe, 20%, Australia and Oceania, 8%, Asia, 8%, South and Central America and the Caribbean, 4%, and Africa, 1%. Respondents were mostly male, 71%, and white, 81%, and 79% identified as heterosexual. 28% reported having a disability, with the most common specified being a mental illness, but the, ne- the next common was visual impairment. Though the results of the survey paint a not, not especially diverse picture of the industry, or at least a largely North, Amer- North American represent- representative portion of the industry, IGDA notes that representation of women in the in- industry has increased in recent years to 24%. Additionally, the survey indicated that the overall average age of game de- game developers is slowly increasing, suggesting that developers feel secure staying in the industry for longer than in the past. Furthermore, more developers feel that diversity is important and support of support efforts to promote it. 83% said they felt diversity in the workplace was very was very or somewhat important, and 85% said the same for diversity in the games industry as a whole. Both of those numbers are up from past years, with respo- responses at 63% and 66% respectively in 2015. Additionally, 57% said they felt that the industry had increased in diversity. Only 3% said they felt the industry was becoming less diverse, a number a number that's been consistent in surveys over the past hmm. three years. I'm going to take a drink of water because yeah, there's, there's a mouthful. It's a lot to take in. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> IGDA asked developers about various workplace policies toward increasing diversity and equality, and 8% of respondents said their studio had none of, none of the pol- policies listed. That's down from 14% in 2017. Policies included, quote, general non-discrimination policy, which 71% said their studio had, an equal opportunity hiring policy, 61%, and a policy pro- prohibiting sexual harassment, 64%. Additionally, 21% said their workplace had a safe space policy, and 16 per- 16% said they had a retention measurement process. However, only 59% of respondents said they felt the policies in place were adequately enforced. In fact, 49% said they had experienced some kind of workplace inequity directed at themselves, while 64% said they had perceived inequity toward others. Or they, yeah, they had perceived an inequity toward others. And so the article goes on to break down even more numbers, including stats about crunch and empl- employment strategies. But it's a long read. So again, check out gamesindustry.biz for all of those breakdowns. Tim, do you have any thoughts on yeah, man. a lot of these? <laughs> There's a lot of numbers here. A lot of I think they're all good numbers. Yeah. Though, right. Like right? I feel like the, the, we're seeing a trend that is uh, moving in, a, in, in the right direction, in a positive direction. And none of these necessarily surprise me, but they, they do make me happy to see mm. that like there's some things being cut like in half even in terms of the bad stuff. How do you feel though? Like do you taking these numbers aside, mm. being some a student of the industry at this point. Yeah, yeah. Understanding like being around developers, being around media people, how do you feel things have changed in the last couple of mm-hmm. years? I feel like things have gotten better. I feel like there have been more and more and more discussions about diversity and how to include people and the importance of including people, right? Like, you know, having, like, I feel like 
for a while, right, there have been discussions about, yeah, like, there's not that many black characters, you know, being represented well in video games. There's not that many women characters being represented well, right? There's not that many trans characters, like, period, in video games, right? Like, and you can, you can, you can look at all the different uh, sorts of different types of rep representation and make the case that, yeah, like, games aren't representing people well, right? Like, you see a lot of the same types of characters in video games. And I, I feel like the conversation sort of led towards the idea that if we want to fix this, we have to hire, we have, we have to hire diversely, right? We have to hire different types of people that know how to depict these characters, that know, that can be able to, like, speak from the heart about how these characters behave and act and look and all this different stuff, right? And so, like, I feel like even recently, I think there's a game, uh, Temtem, that just came out. It's like the Pokemon MMO. Uh, and, you know, I was I was watching a Twitter video on it, and somebody was pointing out, that like, oh, yeah, like, look at the different hairstyles. Like, there are actual hairstyles that reflect black hair in a way that you don't really get well in video games. In character creation Yeah, in character creation tools. Like, cre character creation tools for black characters historically are pretty terrible. You get an like, afro, you don't get an yeah, afro. Yeah, you get an afro, and sometimes you don't even get, like, a like a buzz cut, right? It, you, yeah, it's usually, it's usually afro or dreads. Yeah, or dreadlocks, <laughs> right? You have, like, two or three options, right? But Temtem... Uh, from what I can tell, I don't know how many options Temtem has, but you know, I saw a few of the options, and they looked pretty creative as far as as far as giving you options uh, to mess with your hair, right? And that one thing alone might seem like a very small thing, but I think it goes a very long way into including more more players and making a game like for me specifically, like you know, feel more robust and better to to experience and play, right? Like, and that's just character creation tools. Like, feed that out into like ways characters behave in games, ways characters look, uh, ways characters interact with each other culturally. Like I remember Mafia 3 coming out and people were uh, surprised, surprised by how well that game tackled some of, some of how the character would speak to other characters, right? Or speak to other black characters versus how they would speak to white characters in, in, in the game given the, the time period and the, the culture that game came out in or the, uh, the setting that game came out in. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like things are getting better. I feel like people are learning you know, of course, like I think there's always room to grow, but yeah. I think with where we're at, like I'm, I'm glad to see that these numbers seem to be getting higher and higher, higher in terms of people feeling like, oh yeah, like things are getting better. Like only three percent said that, you know, they feel like things aren't getting better. And it's the same three, not the same people, but like but, there was three percent before as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's, it's like interesting that number stay consistent, but the other number is kind of like you know moving the right direction. I do think that with many things, it's just an education process, and yeah. it's even hearing that what you just described about hairstyles. I'm sure so many people haven't ever thought about that before, but mm -hmm. now are like, oh, okay, I see that point. Yeah, because I feel like so many people um, that are on the wrong side of history, um, whether or not they intend to be. They they hear things of like oh man like we does every video game protagonist need to be a woman and it's like mm. they're they're missing the point of yeah. of the deeper nuances of what that means and I feel like you do need to push through this like moments of like yeah we might see a couple female protagonists in a row mm -hmm. but when you still look at the 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 breakdown of how often that actually happens it's yeah. it's not at all a majority, right? Mm -hmm. But you need to have these moments to kind of push through to be able to have the nuanced conversations of like, all right, they're not equal. They're not the same just because they're women. They're not all the same thing. There's different things being added to each of these games in the same way that you're talking about even the hairstyles and stuff like that. It's like these small things that actually add up to a, a much larger whole. Yeah, like it's not, it's not at all about like, eliminating white characters right or eliminating male characters or eliminating like certain types of characters or it's, it's not a, it's not about forcing in other different types of characters right it's about representing well right it's about being reflective of like the reality that we live in that there's there there are different types of people in the world and, and, and making sure that games kind of reflect that and that games are for everybody which i think is is a really exciting thing like tell me why the the don't nod game is coming out and, um, and tell me why is the name of the game, right? I'm not saying, <laughs> tell me why is the name of the game. but you know, the game Tell Me Why by Don't Nod is coming out, I believe, this year, I think this summer, right? And uh, it features, I think, the main character being a trans character. And just the announcement of that game alone made waves. And you know, the, the, the way in which they kind of tackled in their statements of being like, oh, yeah, no, we're, we're working with people to make sure this character is, is represented well, you know, that alone is making people feel, uh, super super included and is making waves and so i think you know whatever whatever you can do to 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 do that and and, and make waves and make people feel included and, and give 
reason give reasons for different types of people to play your game i think all that's a good thing and Absolutely. so it's exciting stuff mm -hmm. number four untitled goose game devs commit one percent of all future earnings to australian indigenous indigenous groups i'm pulling this from james o'connor over at GameSpot. People wanted to hate on the goose. Say he's a little troublemaker, but now look, he's doing good. Even he's I, doing good for the world. Here's the thing: I'm one of the haters. Yeah, I never understood the goose game, uh, but like the goose game keeps doing cool things, and so like I can't really hate anymore. Am yeah. I am I on my way to 100%ing that game? Are you really? I'm real close. Hong Jesus. Kong, baby. January 26th in Australia is officially called Australia Day, a public holiday meant to celebrate the arrival of the British First Fleet in 1788. It's the date that the British sovereignty was declared and as such it's also a day of mourning for many indigenous australians as it marks the beginning of british rule and a period of history where numerous atrocities were committed reparations have never been provided and land rights were never ceded in the wake of january 26 2020 one australian developer has pledged to take part in the quote pay the rent initiative which asks people to pledge a portion of their income to ind indigenous groups on a regular basis house house the developer of entitled goose game and push me pull pull you i didn't know they made another game push oh, I... me pull you <laughs> will give at least one percent of all their earnings going forward to indigenous groups and this is pulled from house house's twitter they tweet out two Which tweets. Is house right? underscore house, house underscore. Yeah, house underscore house underscore. Their first tweet says, "Our video games are made on stolen Wurun hmm, Wurun Jerry. I hope I'm pronouncing that remotely correctly. Wurun Jerry land. We at House House will be paying at least one percent of our income to Indigenous groups in per in perpetuity as part of the pay of the rent movement. We encourage others to do the same, and then they provide a link, which is paytherent.net.au." Their second tweet states, as a start, we're giving to the Wurundjeri Tribe Council, warriors of Aboriginal resistance, and at Seed Mob. If you're a settler living and working on Aboriginal land like, like we are, please consider paying the rent. Uh, the article continues, the land of the Wurundjeri Tribe covers what is now known as the northern suburbs of Melbourne, uh, Melbourne Victoria. Prior to colonization, there were around 300 unique indigenous nations. T today, Untitled Goose Game has sold over 1 million copies. If it continues to sell well in 2020, 1% a month could be a substantial contribution. Another really cool story. Yeah, man. Right? Good on them, man. Good on them. Goose it up. That's awesome. There's been like quite a few stories for like this month of developers doing cool things, right? There are the uh, stories earlier in the a month about developers donating proceeds to the, the, fires. the wildfires, right? And so it's always cool to see developers... Uh, using their their power for good, mm -hmm. right? And House House is, is an indie developer, and so that's even cooler. Yep. Number five, Dauntless Studio acquired by Singapore-based company, uh, based games company Garena. This is from Patrick Shanley of the Hollywood Reporter. Interesting. Is it? Because I, I the Hollywood Reporter. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, that is interesting. Because <laughs> like I read the news story, and I'm gonna read it again, but like. You know, Greg included it, which is why I'm including it in the in the breakdown. But I read it and I was like, I don't know what to take away from this. But uh, uh, to go into the story, Garena, a Singapore a Singapore based game developer and publisher owned by consumer internet company C Limited, has acquired Canadian independent game studio Phoenix Labs, the developer of 2019 role playing game Dauntless, founded in 2014 in Vancouver by game development veterans from Riot Games and Bioware. Phoenix Labs launched Dauntless, its debut game, last year and quickly amassed 5 million players over its first week of early access release. The studio currently has more than 100 employees with offices in Vancouver, San Francisco, and Seattle. Garena was an early investor in Phoenix Labs. The companies declined to share financial specifics of the, deals, of the deal. The team at Phoenix Labs and Garena will continue to support Dauntless as well, well as explore, quote, new opportunities in global markets and on mobile. Quote, our partners at Arena have been our most steadfast supporters since the early days of Phoenix Labs, and we are excited to join, voice, join, join forces with a global games leader, said Jesse Houston, CEO and co-founder of Phoenix Labs. Quote, with this next step, we're able to ensure that we can provide the best possible experience for Dauntless players around the world. And so, congrats, Dauntless, on the, on the acquisition or being acquired. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully this is good news. I, I was yeah. trying to like Google around to, to get a little bit more info on Garena and everything that I'm seeing, you know, I don't want to jump to conclusions here, but I'm seeing a lot of microtransactions, a lot of mobile game bullshit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, a lot of battle royale cash in type stuff. Yeah, C C uh what's it called? C Limited or whatever the company is called, the uh, Garena. 
C Limited. C Limited. Yeah, C Limited. Consumer Internet Company. You know, not knowing anything about them, like like never hearing the name before, I was like. Probably some like mobile. You sound <laughs> like, bad. Yeah, you sound like you sound like the, like yeah, sound like the, the bad guys in a in a James Bond movie. Yeah, exactly. And so like, um, hope, hopefully maybe Dauntless mission doesn't impossible. go go down. Yeah, maybe Mission Impossible. Maybe Dauntless doesn't go down the road of of uh, nickel and diamond. Mm-hmm. You know, but we we'll, we shall see. We shall see. We'll stay tuned. And then last story number six: Xbox Games with Gold and PlayStation Plus games games for February have been revealed. And they are bangers. At least yeah, some, well, of them. some of them are. Yeah. Half of them are. Enough of them are. <laughs> On the Xbox side of things, we have TT Isle of Man, and that's February 1st, uh, February 29th. Call of Cthulhu. Which, oh, by the way, year. leap year. Yeah. We'll have more leap years this decade than any ever before. Wow. Yeah. Wait, than any ever before? <laughs> <laughs> Call, yeah, Call of Duty Little available February 16th of March uh, March 15th. Uh, Fable Heroes available February 1st to February, uh, to 15th. And that's on both Xbox One and Xbox 360. Oh, I see what's going on going on here. It's the split thing between 360 and one. And then Star Wars Battlefront available from 16th to 29th. And that's the OG. That's dude. the OG Star that's Wars the Battlefront. Xbox the great one. Star Wars yeah. Battlefront. And that's available on both Xbox One and Xbox 360 games with gold. And here's that's the, the thing. That's the cool one, man. Battlefront 2 is way better, though, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's hard for me to get excited because I'm like, I could just get Battlefront 2. Yeah. But, but still it's cool. still cool. Still cool. On the PlayStation side of things, we have Bioshock the, the collection, collection, right? There you go, man. What a, what, a, what a grab. We have also The Sims 4, which mm-hmm. is also another mm-hmm. great one if you're a Sims fan. And then we have Firewall Zero Hour for VR. Which you have PSVR. Yeah. Like, th- there which you is go. Awesome. That's one of Kevin's favorite games of all time. Yeah. Right? You love Firewall Zero Hour. Honestly, like, Tim, have you played it? No. You need to play it because it's good. Like, it is, you play it and you're like, oh shit, this is the future of video games. Kevin, can we play sometime? I have it. I tried it, but I've never had anybody to play with. And so I just, like, I've dropped off. I'd be very excited to Dude, do that. Dude, let's do it, man. It'd be we, great but for we me. keep talking about playing games, but we're not doing it yet. You That's know true. what I mean? I'll, when yeah. I jump into GTA Online next, I'll, I'll hit you up. All right. But I'll we also have to play Firewall because that'll be great PSLW content. Dude. I love that game so much, and I feel like that's one that we could, because you need a four-man team, right? Yeah. I, I feel like that's one we could grab Miller and bring him into it. Oh, know? 100%. Wow. We can make it happen. Wow. I can't wait to see you and Kevin play video games together, but yeah. bless, that seems like it's so it's, far it's away. It's so far away. Tim, if I wanted to know where I could go to get to find out what's coming out to Mom and Grop Shops today, where would I go? <laughs> the official list of upcoming software across each and every platform is listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show host each and every weekday. do 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 yeah. yeah. Out today, we have Coffee Talk Coffee for Switch, Talk. PC, and Mac. And that's the one Greg was talking a lot about on PSLVUXOXO. Uh, he thinks very highly of it. I'm Ooh. thinking about trying it out. And so, I like coffee. I like talking. Yeah, dude. It's a, And you do both those I'm things. Doing both game. right you now. You talk a lot, and you also make coffee and Coffee Talk. <laughs> we also have Load Runner Legacy for PS4. Music Racer for PS4 Music and Xbox Racer. One, which is one that I have to play for PSLVXOXO. Um, spoilers for PSLVXOXO if you haven't listened yet. Top Run for PS4. Horse Farm for Switch. Oh, horse Farm. Demon Heart Hunters for PC. Mortal Glory for PC. The Pedestrian for PC. What are the PC players doing? What y'all up to? What are y'all up to? You, is this what hey, y'all man. do? I'm going to play the Pedestrian. <laughs> It's like the opposite of Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> well, you play Pedestrian, I'll play Void Space. Void Space is also coming out for PC. <laughs> These are all PC ass games. <laughs> yep. Say no more. New dates. Motion Twin is very surprised to announce that the Bad C DLC for Dead Cells now has an official release date, February eleventh, twenty twenty. Play two extra levels with new weapons, enemies, mechanics, and a boss. It's four nine four ninety nine on PC and consoles i saw the trailer for this today and i was just like my god this game looks like it has evolved so much really dude did you oh so you did play a lot i played the hell out of it i never beat it man i got to i i know i got to the last area and i could never that last area is hard dude i played that game for probably 20 hours total Mm -hmm. and i thought i was gonna do it i thought that i had a chance it was like three different flights there and back that Mm -hmm. i played and man, it was so fun. It was so fantastic. But yeah, God, it I, just beat me I down. loved my time with Dead Cells. Nick yeah. almost beat it. He didn't. Oh know. my God. Dude, there's something about roguelites. When they hit the right way, they just hook you. The same it, thing happened to me with Rogue Legacy. It was the first one I ever played, and I, I fell in love with it. Like yeah. a week or, ago or so, somebody asked us on this show, like, what are games that we like 
got hooked on their genre we don't normally like, and mm-hmm. I was saying Fire Emblem. Dead Cells is actually like a more modern yeah, example for me one. where I would have never thought I'd like that type of game. But. Yeah, that the the gameplay loop is almost like near perfect mm-hmm. of like going in and you're repeating over and over again. Um, but like it's 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 that feeling of. One more, just yeah, one just, more. just one more. Like oh, this, this is the run. Like this is the run where I can get it. And even when it's not the run, you're still collecting resources and collecting things that you can then use as permanent upgrades. So you feel like you're always, you feel like you're always getting better in terms of skill and in terms of your unlockables. Yeah, which might be like the one issue I had with Dead Cells is that at a certain point I felt like I wasn't progressing enough in terms of the unlockables. Like I hit a wall where I was like, I don't know what to upgrade anymore. Yeah. Um, and like that last area. Mm. Like what I forgot what the thing was. Was it was were the enemies healing or something? I forget what it was. It, it got to a point, like there were certain levels in it where I was just like, how are we not gonna just die the first time we play this? Oh. And yeah. it's just like that's so upsetting when we're mm. forty five minutes into this run. Yeah. You know? But I get that that's that's the loop. Yeah. Like that's 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 the name of the game. That I just remember that last area specifically like pissing me off. Uh, and one day I'd like to beat it, you know, and I, yeah, I looked at the trailer too and I was like, man, this game, I want to get game, back to it. Dude. So what a good time. Mm. Now it's time for reader mail. You can write into patreon.com slash kind of funny games where you can get the show ad free. And speaking of ads, this episode of kind of funny games daily is brought to you by GI Joe war on Cobra. I'm going to take a drink of water Cobra. because I'm having the Greg thing where Greg talks about drinking coffee and his mouth gets dry and it's hard to read. I'm having that with the tea. Ooh. I'm having that with the tea, Ooh. and so I'm going to take a now drink of water. That's the tea. <laughs> that's the tea. Do you ever drink tea? <laughs> yeah. I, I'm a big fan of mint herbal. You mm. know what I mean? I'm a big fan of mint in general. Mint tea is great. I love I'm a big fan tea. of liquids. I just like drinking liquids. Yeah. So give I me feel some that. tea. Yo, Joe, G.I. Joe, and Cobra are back in G.I. Joe War on Cobra. Will you join forces? Will you join the Joes and fight for justice? Or will you seek world domination with Cobra? The choice is yours. G.I. Joe Warren Cobra is a free download and out for out now for both Android and iOS devices. Whether you're a fan of the classic animated series, the iconic toy line, comics, or all of the above, G.I. Joe Warren Cobra has something for everyone. It has a massive roster featuring the most beloved and infamous heroes, villains, and vehicles featured in the series. Nick grew up wanting to be a Joe, and Greg always wanted to scream like a Cobra commander. Yeah, Once you've chosen your does. side, players will be introduced to the game's mechanics via Roadblock for Joes or Baroness for Cobra. You'll learn how to manage your base, units, vehicles, and engage in battles to help you get a feel for managing your troops. As you continue with the single-player campaign missions, more, more options for reinforcing your army uh, with additional units, heroes, and vehicles begin to open up. But that's just the beginning. G.I. Joe War and Cobra also features PvP and a ranked leaderboard. You'll need to fight hard for your faction, build out, and defend your base strategically, and master the art of directing troops to conquer your foes. And in no time, you'll be an expert on making attacks from air, land, and sea. Go, Joe. While you're here, we have a special in-game gift from D3Go. As a token of appreciation for checking out G.I. Joe War and Cobra, we're giving away two free characters for all new players to help reinforce your army. Joes can look forward to picking up a free Bazooka, the G.I. Joe Missile, missile Specialist, uh, while Cobra followers can add Missile BAT, the Battle Android Trooper, to their squad. I hope they add Snow Job at some point. Is Snow Job a thing mm-hmm. in G.I. Joe? Snow Job is one of the characters. Oh, man. What a great <laughs> cast of characters. <laughs> in the meantime, don't forget that, quote, knowing is half the battle. Check True. out the description below or head to www.d3go.com slash kfgames to download G.I. Joe, Warren Cobra, and receive your free gift for your mobile device. My co- my VHS copy of Transformers, the movie, mm. the original one, had a like trailer before it of G.I. G- Joe, the movie. Oh, yeah. But it wasn't necessarily a trailer. It was just the opening of the movie. And it was just like like it felt more musical than anything. And it's like them on the Statue of Liberty. I remember watching that movie and being like, "This is great. I love it." <laughs> yeah. I forget how old I was. Bring this up. Is Kev. that Snow Job? That's our boy Snow Job, voiced by none other than Rob Paulson. Wait, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Man, Snow Ash Paulson's dead. <laughs> yeah. Wild man. Yep. What a small Wild. world. When I learned that, I almost freaked out. Me too. Because I listened to so much Game Explain, and I didn't know it until he came on this show. Well, what blew my mind is we had Rob Paulson on our show. <laughs> yeah, on that too. We, we know him. We know his voice like very well. Mm-hmm. And I was hanging out with Ash for the first time in New York at a Smash event. And like we're talking, he was like, all of a sudden, I'm like, You're, I've listened to you so often, but something's up. He's like, oh, yeah, my dad is a voice actor. That's probably what you're thinking. I was like. Oh my God! I when I said that, I didn't expect to actually get an answer. Yeah, he's like, "Yeah, Rob Paulson's my dad." I'm like, 
<laughs> Wild. Wild. A small world. Mm-hmm. Robin Hood is our next sponsor. 2020 is the perfect time to start thinking about 2040. With Robinhood, you can invest in the markets and earn interest with a with a competitive APY on uninvested cash. They make it easy to get started and learn as you grow with an intuitive app experience, no commission fees on trades. And stock prices don't have to hold you back. You can buy a piece of a company you love for as low as $1 and build your, build your portfolio a little at a time. Buy one share, buy half a share, three and a quarter shares. It's up to you, your budget, and your goals. Your first stock is on the house when you set up your account. Go to games.robinhood.com to learn more and claim your free stock. Annual percentage yield, that's APY, on uninvested cash is paid by program banks and is variable. Robinhood Financial is not a bank. The free stock uh, <clears throat> the free stock offer is subject to terms and conditions. All investment involves risk risks. Others fee other fees may apply. Visit rbnhd.co.fees. Marcus Hutchins writes in and says, hey, guys, Marcus Hutchins, it's 2020. Let's assume we're entering a new decade of dreams. Yes. On a scale of one to five, five being very likely. How likely do you think it is we see uh, we see new games in these dormant franchises franchises this decade? So we're going to go through them one by one. All right. Scale of one to five. How likely how likely is it we see another entry in these in the next decade? Crash Bandicoot. Five. I'm also with you. I'm out at five. We have to get a new Crash, mm-hmm. Crash Bandicoot. Mm-hmm. The the collection sold too well to sold not make a sequel. Very well. And they're out of things to remake of consequence. I mean, they could make they could remake um the Crash Crash Bash. Oh, actually, I wasn't going to Crash they Bash. They're not going to do that. They're not going to they're not they gonna do that. I would like it because I remember I remember loving that demo. <laughs> that demo with, with the pogo sticks. Yeah, the Let's pogo sticks. Go. I had a demo of that and Spyro. I forget it was like a Pizza Hut thing or what, but yeah, Spiral Year of the Dragon. Yes, you get the skateboard. Yes, fantastic. I loved it. There you go. Uh, Knights of the Old Republic. I'm at a three. Four. 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 Interesting. Fable. Oh my god. I'm at a four. I. I'm gonna fucking say five, doggy dog. Let's yeah. go. You have complete confidence. It's yeah. happening. I mean, I would have had complete confidence this gen. Fair. But which yeah. that's why I was gonna say four, but like it has to be five. Mm. Like they have to be making a fable game. Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Ugh. I'm at a two. Tony Hawk Pro Skater? Like a new, like a new entry in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Like now like, I'm gonna say one. Okay. A new Tony Hawk skateboarding game? Four. Really? Yeah. Tony wasn't happy with five, and not oh, many nobody, people nobody, were. <laughs> nobody was. I just like playing as Lil Wayne, though. It's just so funny. That is that <laughs> He's is a funny. Playable character. <laughs> that is funny. I'm gonna go two for Tony Hawk Pro Skater, and I'm gonna say three for a new Tony Hawk game. Metal Gear Solid. It's an interesting one. It is interesting. Ah, they put out Survive. <sighs> yeah, they did. I, I'm gonna say three. Here's the thing. I have. I want to believe that we get that we get a remake of some sort. I and mean, if, if it's a remake, it's gonna be Blue Point. I think. Like I, I don't see. You don't think they Konami develop because like doing I, it themselves. But they have that engine though. You know, the Fox engine. The Fox oh, engine. Man. And like they only made die. they only made Metal Gear Solid with it, right? And I guess like survive. they made they made um and survive. And I think they made the sports games Pro, Pro Evo Ooh, using it. I don't know. I want to say I'm not positive. Kind of funny. Dot slash you're wrong. Man. Yeah, dude. And I feel like dude making a new or making remaking. Metal Gear Solid One or Metal Gear Solid Three or like literally remake any of them in that engine, you know, with yeah, those but systems. I, I don't think it's that easy because yeah, it's the systems. Like yeah. you need somebody that actually knows how to like make games there. Yeah, true. <laughs> right. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna say three. I'm sticking with three, right in the middle there. Prince of Persia. Ah, my heart won. Yeah, I'm gonna say two. I want it because wait, that's so a, Ubisoft owns Prince of Persia, bad. right? Yeah. Ubisoft, they they make interesting decisions sometimes. They, they do. Like Beyond Good and Evil Two, who could have seen that coming? I mean, yeah, I don't, who's gonna see it coming? I don't know. Like, they, I don't think that they make weird decisions anymore. Like, I feel like their decisions are fairly understandable. And every once in a while, they add a new little wrinkle to that. Like, mm-hmm. no one could have possibly seen Mario plus Rabbits coming, but yeah. that just happened. But it's like now it's like, all right, cool, weird Nintendo collaborations. That seems possible. We saw the Star Fox stuff in a, I forgot the name of the game, Star Force oh. Legends or whatever. Yeah, no, I, just, I know what you're talking about. I forget what it's called too. 
but uh um, the toy game. Yeah. I, I just I just don't believe. Hmm. F zero. Mm. God, you're just twisting a knife into my heart. Yeah. I'm gonna say five. I'm gonna be sh- five. Yeah, dude. Because like, how dormant can that franchise be? Like, I feel like they, I feel like they got to give it a shot. I mean, I I agree. Like, a, by 2030, Did if we don't get a new F Zero game. Ever play F Zero GX on GameCube? No. What I, I, a fantastic video game! It is so good. Looks beautiful to this day. Mm. Story mode hard as nails and cool, interesting stuff that they were they were doing. That was a collaboration with Sega. And I'm so, like, Nintendo was weird back then. Mm-hmm. They were just like, hey, Capcom, we're going to partner yeah. with you on Game Zelda Nintendo's games. We're going to partner with you for Star Fox. Hey, what's up, Sega? Like, you can you can get F-Zero. Mm-hmm. Sure. I, the, Nintendo just doesn't do that anymore, at least not on that scale. F-Zero, I don't know, man. Like, I, I'm shocked we haven't seen one on 3DS at the very least, mm-hmm. right? There was a couple entries on Game Boy Advance, and then it's just been gone. I feel like I've... I feel like they're going to make an F-Zero game this decade, but I feel like it'll be, like, a smaller game. Like, it'll be, like, a B-tier Nintendo game. I'm fine. Like, I'd be you know, fine with that, man. I'll like, take F-Zero in any form I can get it at this Because I could, I could see it see it being made at that Mario Tennis Aces tier. Yeah. You know, or, like, the... Like, I don't think it'll be, like, a big Nintendo game by any means. I'm going to say two. Mm. Pikmin. Five. Five, yeah. Castlevania. Does it even matter? Because, <laughs> like, we have other... I feel like we've come so far with Metroidvanias yeah. that, like... And we got, like, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Like, I, do people... I know people would would love a new Castlevania, but with where Konami's at right now... That's the thing. Konami's in such a weird place that I feel like it's hard to predict things. I feel like at some point in our lives, we're going to see a Symphony of the Night remake. I just don't know when that is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I I'm going to say two. A Symphony of the Night remake in the Fox engine. Oh my god! <laughs> Why? It's a sh- shiny looking pixels. Sly Cooper. So one for me. One. Yeah, because who's gonna develop it? Sly Cooper. Actually, who owns Sly Cooper? Like the IP? Is that PlayStation or is that um, Insomniac? Or not Insomniac? Sorry, Sucker Punch. I mean, it's one and the same, right? Fair. Yeah, I don't see it happening. Yeah, it's owned by Sucker Punch, which is owned by Sony. So, yeah, yeah I just don't see it happening. NBA Street. Fuck. Who wrote this list? I don't know, man. It sounds like it was written by Marcus me. Marcus <laughs> Hutchins, goddamn, man. It sounds like a NBA list Street I made. Unfortunately, won. Ah. Can you imagine if Blue Point was doing an NBA Street Volume oh 2 remake? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that. With the entire soundtrack, which, by the way, is only like six songs. They did play a lot of the same songs in that soundtrack. <laughs> but All of them classic, Troy, dude. Oh, they reminisce over you. Oh, my God. That soundtrack is classic. So good. But I'm going to say two. But uh, mm, yeah, I'm gonna say too, because like I feel like we get we got that um, FIFA Street game late in the PS3, yeah, and we also got SSX. Like I guess it was just called SSX, I think. Yeah, got late that in the game PS3. Came and went. Yeah, and they tr- I remember like, the first trailer for that game. No, I remember the demo. They had machine guns. Did they really, dude? I unless I'm having some SSX? weird fever dream. Like I swear to God, when they first r- revealed the reboot of SSX, mm-hmm. that was like for last gen. Yeah, th- like it was like. Them in a helicopter with machine guns, and then they jumped out of the the thing with guns. <laughs> Keep talking. I'm gonna look for yeah, this. Yeah, that's quick. that's very obscure. Um, but yeah, that's the last one he says. And then out of these, what would you want to see? Any I didn't mention, you want um, any I didn't mention, you want more. Love the show. Keep the dream alive, Marcus. Out of all these, which one would I want the most? Probably Metal Gear Solid, followed by NBA Street. <laughs> Because what we have Crash Bandicoot, Knights of the Old Republic, Fable, uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, Metal Gear Solid, Prince of Persia, F Zero, Pikmin, Castlevania, Sly Cooper, NBA Street. So yeah, it would be Metal Gear Solid for me. I'll love a new Metal Gear Solid game. But the thing is, like the reality of the reality of how a new Metal Gear Solid game gets made and comes out, like I don't know if I trust Konami yeah. to really fulfill that in the way that NBA Street. Just give me slop and I'll still I'll eat it up, man. <laughs> you know? Yeah, for me, number one's Prince of Persia, and number two would be Metal Gear Solid. Mm. Right, did you find this machine gun trailer? I, I didn't. Maybe I made it up. But what a wild time where they tried to bring back like the EA Sports big big games. Yeah. And it, they just flopped. Okay. Like I, I swear to God, I'm probably the only per- person that played that FIFA Street game for PS3. Because I playing it, I was like, I can't believe this is a game. This seems this is a weird, it's a weird version of what was once great. Yeah, totally. 
Uh, let's see here. Lee Polero writes in and says, so Patapon 2 has a release date and caused quite the celebration at Kind of Funny. However, when Patapon 2 was re- recently leaked, it was leaked along with the Final Fantasy 7 demo. So, where is the FF7 demo? Do you think it will be released soon? Will it release on the former release day of March 3rd, 2020? Or will it release when the game releases? Would love to know your thoughts. Thank you. Um, We're going to see this demo. Mm-hmm. I don't know when. I don't think it'll be when either March 3rd or when the game actually releases. I think it'll be somewhere um, just random. Yeah. Do you think it'll be earlier or after March 3rd? Early. I think the I think the demos before the game comes out. Man, I I feel like it has. I feel like for sure it's happening. Given like the whole Patapon, like Patapon came out of nowhere. Yeah, and so for that game to come out of nowhere and for that, yo, to be, that's actually a really solid point. Yeah, for it to be leaked alongside Final Fantasy VII, like or the Final Fantasy VII demo, I feel like all but confirms that that thing exists when we see it. Well, I mean, we know it it exists. Like it leaked. Like, yeah, it it didn't just leak that like it exists. Like you can watch the whole demo on YouTube right oh. now. Oh, <laughs> like people hacked it to play it. Like, gotcha. Yeah, like that shit is real. I think I think the fact that Patapon is out, I feel I feel like means that demo might be imminent. And so I'm gonna mm-hmm. say, hmm, I'm gonna say February or March. I would say March third at the latest. We see it. That's, That's where I'm at. At the latest, I, I get that. Kev, I just sent assets a video. Now it's time to squad up. Mr. Jo- Mr. Mitch George writes in and says, good day, bless Gettys. Today is Bell Let's Talk Day. For every tweet or retweet of the hashtag Bell Let's Talk on Twitter, Bell, the Canadian telecom giant, will donate to Canadian mental health initiatives. The tweet or retweet does not have to come from a Canadian to help Canadians. If everyone cool. can go to either my Twitter or any tweet using the hashtag Bell Let's Talk uh, and simply retweet it, it will be appreciated. Uh, thanks and keep spreading that positivity and the occasional toilet toad. Jesus, Mitch's Twitter toilet is at Mr. Mitch George if you want to go over there and retweet that. Oh, Deadly Descents. Yeah. Wait, is this is that the name of the So wait, what okay, what so is So here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen, from what I can gather right now, is they originally revealed the game as SSX Deadly Descents okay. in two thousand ten. And then in two thousand eleven they re revealed it as just SSX. I don't know if I made up the gun part, but let's watch this. <laughs> I vaguely remember this. See, though, like, this is such a weird vibe for SSX. Yeah. And they did the same thing to FIFA Street. I can't remember the, the trailer treatment, but it was like a more serious vibe to it. What a we- what an interesting thing. So, yeah, they're diving out the plane. I don't see guns yet. God. When, when, games, when, when games had to be gritty. Like, how do you go from SSX Tricky <laughs> to eventually do this? Oh, hear it. Do it, dude. Do it. There he oh, goes. Oh, yeah, because that was the thing. Was like yeah. the, the flying. All right, so there wasn't guns, but you can imagine why I, can, I, can under, I, yeah, why I can understand I why you make that leap. Because, yeah, that thing was deadly serious. <laughs> it looked like it was going on a James Bond mission. Oh, man. man. Now it's time for kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. Let's see what we got wrong. Uh, today is the 29th. I got to start deleting some of these things. Let's see here. Let's see here. Let's see here. Let's see here. Donkey Kong is a gorilla, not a monkey. <laughs> hey, I got to be about. honest with you. You should just be happy I didn't call him a donkey. <laughs> Fair. Uh, Bob's right in says, it's also worth noting at the ending of God of War 3 where Kratos... Well, actually, I'm not going to read about the ending of a game. Yeah, I'm going to... I'm gonna st- yeah, but like... It's remastered on the PS4. Like, if people really wanted to play it, they could go play it. Uh, let's see. Starlink, Battle for Atlas, by the way, it was that game. Yeah, Starlink, yes, yeah. that's right. Boards in Zero Zero says Pro Evolution Soccer does use the Fox engine since 2014. Haha. It's weird how, like, we retain such random knowledge yep. about things. Like, why did I know that? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Sly Cooper stuff, which I don't know if it's wrong. Let's see. We got more clarification about the Final Fantasy demo, which we actually did clarify on the show. That's it, man. Yeah, it looks like there's a lot of stuff written in, but it looks like it's stuff that we clarified or got right. 
We nailed it, motherfuckers. We nailed it. Deal with that. Yeah. What Tomorrow's hosts are Tim and Ray Narvaez. Hell yeah, man. Yeah, so get hyped about that. Of course, this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday live right here on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. We run you through the nerdy news you need to know about. We have a Patreon post show for those that are subbed at the silver level of patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames. So stick around for that. Otherwise, until next time, game daily.